What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Craftsman Lawn Tractor again. This time, we're getting rid of these teeny tiny 20 by 10 by 8 tires on the back. Uh, I used chains on them. We're going to go to an ATV tire. Yes. ATV tire. Yes. But how are we going to do it? I'll show you how. Let's get to it. All right guys, so in the woods, these guys worked out good when I had chains on the tires. Uh, gave it a lift, everything else. Uh, I really want ATV tires on this bad boy. So I picked these up off of Marketplace, 140 bucks for both of them. They come with the wheels. A lot of people that I watched, uh, they cut these rims up and then used the spindle out of the middle and bolted them through these. I don't want to do, I'm not going to do that. That's number one. That's a lot of work to do that. And I don't want to destroy that wheel either. So I got a better idea. I took my wheel and tire down to family farm and home, which is one of the local uh, farm supply stores here in Michigan. And you can buy these cool little sets, sprockets and hubs. So the transaxle in the back is three quarter inch spindle with a keyway. Look at this. So I went with the X-Series um, three quarter inch bore hub and then the same thing. Uh, this is a 40 tooth, doesn't matter because I'm not gonna use the chain on this. Um, and then a, uh, this is a, I don't know how many inches, whatever. Uh, what I basically, what I did is I brought the wheel and tire into the store and if you wanted a huge one to be able to drill through those, it's like 30 bucks. This guy is 12. So what I'm going to do is it's going to go right about there. And then I am going to transfer these four small holes through that hold the center cap on. Uh, drill those through, bolt this sprocket to this wheel after I weld it on to that hub right there. So that's a super tight fit right there on that spindle. It is a three quarter inch, but I'm kind of wondering maybe, maybe if it's not, maybe it's the next step up. Uh, either way, I think it'll work fine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, put it on here, I'm gonna weld it, uh, and then I can lay this on the back, clamp it up, transfer the holes through, and then I can bolt this. <laughs> This and this will be welded. Bolt this to the tire. Essentially slide it onto the spindle. Uh, we should be good to go. This has a set screw in it. Um, I could space this out if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to remove all this stuff here, uh, take it off, and if I need to space later on down the road, I'll remove this, but I don't think I will. I'll just hit the set screw, and I should be good. Uh, so first order of business, I'm going to get this hub off of the spindle. Weld these two things together. All right, I threw some tacks down on this and uh, she is good to go for now. So now I'm gonna mock it up to the back side of the wheel, clamp it as best as I can in place so I can just transfer the holes. Maybe I'll just sharpie them. That should work actually. Then I'll transfer the markings for the four holes onto this side of the sprocket and then I'll be able to throw it on the drill press and just drill through. Back here like this, center it as good as I can, clamp it into place, transfer the holes. Let's get, this could be way easier than what these, what these people are doing on YouTube um, as far as cutting up. I mean, it, yeah, more expensive, but like I said, I don't want to ruin those wheels. So yeah, let's get to mocking this up there and uh, transfer some holes. All right, here's the method to my madness. Got a couple little C-clamps going into the back side of the wheel, holding that on. All I did was eyeball this as center as I could believe. It, it probably could get a little bit better, but I'm just gonna mark these now, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more, but then I'll mark these. With I realigned it, uh, marked them out with a Sharpie, and then I took a prick punch to the center. Uh, so we're ready to take this bad boy out. Throw on the Harbor Freight drill press. 
here's what she looks like uh, now outside of the wheel. So I'll start with eighth inch. And then I've got to actually check and see what size holes these are. Look like a quarter 20 will fit within. Very good. I'll check a 5 16 though. Um, and then whatever that is, I'll make the same dimensions on this guy here. All right, so I did quarter inch and, well, I started with an eighth. Uh, and then I went to quarter inch. The reason why I didn't go to 5 16ths and use a 5 16ths is the holes got really close to the edge of the sprocket. I can always redo this, right? See how close they are? Eh. So I went with quarter inch. I got some quarter 20s. Uh, I just slid the one in and all the other, the other three line up great. So what I'm going to do, I already know it's going to work. So what I'm going to do now before I go any further I'm going to take this one, lay it on top of here, transfer the same marks, so that one will be all ready. So after I weld it, uh, or I, I could do it whenever I want, but it'll just make this one much easier. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and then I can throw that bad boy on the spindle. I might clean that spindle up, see if I can get this to slide on a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to do next. All right, holes are transferred over, and I got to shout out the Milwaukee Sharpie. These things, this thing's covered in oil. Regardless, it wrote through this. I mean, I have to keep these in the freezing garage. They write on wet metal, everything. Love these things. Uh, anyway, those are transferred through. And then what I did, if you don't have emery cloth, I'd keep it around. Uh, go down to your local parts store, get some emery cloth. Uh, works perfect on stuff like this. I took 120 grit to the spindle uh, until I got the bore or the hub to slide on there nice. And then I finished it off with some 240. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, no issues whatsoever now. Now, one thing I'm going to do, these are going to come to about here or so where this tire fitment's going to ride. After that, I could use the set screw, but I also want to do a spacer. I mean, there's clips here, right? Ideally, I would love for this to run right there so I could put the factory clip back on um, and then just go take this factory spacer off, bring it to the parts store and find a collar that'll fit over this so I can space it out exactly to here. So there's just a little bit of play, just like stock. Uh, and then I'll be able to retain that. That's ideally what I want and I don't want to use a set screw. Um, it's got a keyway already, so should be okay. Uh, so we'll see. That's I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do. So for right now, uh, I am going to take the finished hub and bolt it to the wheel with some quarter twenties and mock it up and see what it looks like and see where this is gonna ride on that shaft because that will determine the next. Uh, course of action all right so i ran to menards got some hardware uh so this is all grade eight stuff this is quarter 20. so i have her all eyeballed center as much as i can uh and then lock washers and nuts on the back side all grade eight now i'm going to put her on the back and just kind of eyeball her and see where she's going to sit on the spindle totally forgot to pick up sleeve material to space this out, uh, but I can add that in later. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna fit this on here and see how she looks. All right, so uh, it's a tight fit on there. I had the sprocket on the wheel. Uh, yeah, it was such a tight fit. Uh, I figured it would be easiest to do this. Uh, so, and I did utilize the set screw. So I got everything on. I put the regular retainer clip back in, keyways in, uh, axle is all greased up and I uh, have the set screws in there. This should be really nice to where she lives. It's just in between the edge of the fender and here. So I'll put this back on then you guys can see what it looks like and then I'll start working on the other side. All right guys, 
it is it's close right um it's close here it's close here i got a little bit of wiggle room though but this is gonna be a, a monster so i'm gonna get this side done uh so i gotta drill out the sprocket i already got her welded i gotta drill the holes out in the sprocket uh clean this axle shaft up uh yeah and get the sprocket on there and then attach the wheel and then i'll be able to see what this thing looks like with both of them on there there she is uh definitely a lot of rake now i knew that was going to happen going from 20 to 26s oh 25 25 by 11 r12 this side was super simple nothing really over here to interfere lined up really and battery died anyway uh this side went on really good everything lined up like i said i set it out to where i could get that clip on there this side on the other hand no um <laughs> it was interfering with the linkage on the inside the bracket that comes out that holds the linkage nothing i could do i can't trim it down anything like that um kind of show you where it is <laughs> and it was hitting right up there um you can see that bracket right there but anyway uh what I did was I just took the wheel off, slid this out, and adjusted it until I got the right clearance um, on both sides of the wheel, and then tightened everything back up on the hub, put the wheel back on. That is gonna be how she goes. Uh, I will get some spacers for the inside just to be certain, but uh, man, there she is. And uh, I don't like the rake. So what I'm gonna wind up doing on here is, if you've seen my previous video, I just really easily took out these four bolts, moved it down one. Uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to get a plate. I actually have a plate. So I will mimic this relief cut here. And then I will have the top of the plate come in here and bolt to these two bolts and then I will move the axle down uh, into the plate and that will bolt in so that'll give me another uh, depending on how long I make the plate I'll probably do an inch and a half and see where I'm at and that will take care of that but yeah right now the rake is wicked but I'm telling you you don't have to go through all that cutting process of ruining your old wheels because i mean right now marketplace these things uh these wheels and tires are going for 100 bucks for 20 inch you can find 18 inch all day long but these 20 inch uh yeah they're going for 100 bucks for the set but i want to keep these either way so that's man it's it's a good cheap way to do it and it was, it's a lot of fun doing this so i'm gonna take her out and uh See how maneuverable she is as soon as I clean up my mess. All right, she is fully operational. Uh, everything clears. Uh, now, one issue, I'm getting ready for to do the lift on the front, but that might be the next video or just something short, some short update. But anyway, um, so even though you get grade eight bolts, I did over tighten it with the impact, um, but that does show you, I mean, it's, grade eight yeah but it's still a quarter 20 so i'm gonna monitor it for a little while i might have to upgrade those to uh five sixteenths uh i don't i don't think there's gonna be an issue after i move to five sixteenths but just keep that in mind if you do this that might be something that you need to uh take care of but yeah i'm getting this ready to build a plate and move this thing up so yeah let's yeah, it'll be in the next video. But, uh, yeah, so it's that simple, man. And honestly, it didn't cost me much money at all to buy the hub and hardware and all that stuff and just fabricate it yourself. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Later.